Here we are with Overload Season 4 Episode 7, and yeah, this will be my first episode with the new format, so let me know what you think about it. But yeah, uh, you can see we have your timer down here, um, which is basically so that you can like match it up with your own footage if you want to watch along. But yeah, this episode I guess will be interesting because we will see dragons, I guess, which will be the first time that Eins has contact with a dragon, at least now in this world. And we only saw one dragon before, which was in season three, I think, with the old woman that knew Gazeth. And so I guess this will be interesting, right? So yeah, if you like what you see, leave a like, subscribe or comment. Let me know what you think about this episode or give me some feedback about this new format. And I would say let's get to the episode. Okay, we see more of those. Is this a leader? He looks fuzzy. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> the clan lord. Is it him or someone else? Is there someone higher up? Man, I would love to see Ayn suddenly coming in and be like, hey, what's up? <laughs> nah, they don't need him. Oh, he meets the dragons. That's interesting. Aren't dragons supposed to be strong? Why does he have connections to dragons? And not only have connections to dragon, but also can make deals with them, that they fight for them. That's interesting, I would say. <clears throat> but yeah, this new format also means that I will watch the intros all the time. So that I don't mess up with the timer and stuff. But yeah, also this new format now is like very bare bones. I just like, I was so tired yesterday after like editing lots of episodes, like from my previous stuff that I had like finished watching, but not edited. Um, So I completely forgot that yesterday was Tuesday. And so I completely forgot that there was a new episode of Overlord and the main gold. And went to bed and I woke up today and I was like, wait, today is Wednesday. I have to watch Overlord and uh, the main goal. So I just like put it together really quickly. I have to think about how I want to uh, put together the layout now. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Frost Dragon Lord, here we go. White dragon. Okay. He believes wrong. Man, it will be so funny when they are like, okay, yeah, we help you. And then Eins comes around and they're like, oh shit. <laughs> and we get some money, we get some gold, we like gold. Yes, exactly. I was like, yeah, come at me. I can't wait to meet you guys. I want to see dragons. Of these lowly. Okay, so it's basically not they have like the power to make deals with them, it's just that they pay him. <clears throat> Ooh, 
Whose child should I send? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Is he a shut-in? <laughs> This is so interesting. <laughs> Seeing dragons talk like this. Daddy comes in. <laughs> okay, it's the one with the glasses. Dude, this is so fighting seeing dragons like this. <laughs> Under his scale? <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my god, here they come. Who's this? Eins? Oh yeah, his orb. <laughs> and these are ice dragons, right? Yeah, he's more like... A shudden, I guess. Nah, that's my dad. <laughs> okay. He's a bit more determined now. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that was nice and easy. But I don't think that the other dragons will be like that, right? He's just like... Not really made for fighting. <laughs> he knows respect. Oh. <laughs> Dude, he's so chubby. Eins likes to collect rare things, right? <laughs> Dude, getting all the information for free. That's... <laughs> oh, new pet for Aura. Oh, what is... Bro, I was so happy. Well, <laughs> dear, dude, this episode is not what I expected. No, 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 no. <laughs> all right and go to the capital to go to the treasury to get the book and all that stuff and meet the dragons 
imagine all the dragons join eins. Then he has dragons in his disposal. He's riding him. <laughs> and his three wives. Right, I didn't pay attention to the voices. That they are all like female like. His mother at least. <clears throat> Why the mother? And just one mother or all the mothers maybe? But I imagine they all like go under Ein's control. That would be so crazy. He brings him straight to his family. Boy, your job was to take care of them. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, please fight. I want to see something. I want to see some action. Eins fighting dragons. Try. Oh. Do dragons have multiple hearts or just one heart? Oh, okay, he spares only the mother, not the other wives. <laughs> Alright, okay. Okay, I spare all of... Okay, good guy, Eins. Keep this promise. All the... There are more? How many are there? Oh yeah, they said that they have like m multiple sons, like which ones should I send? So it makes sense. My dumb brain. But I wonder how many there are. And I wonder if Eins will revive the dragon, maybe. <laughs> Only seven times, dude. And he never used it before. I mean, I guess this would be some good fundings, right? For the kingdom. <laughs> is this... I think this is a world item, right? <clears throat> world tier item? <laughs> yeah, they stand no chance. I wonder if a death knight could win against a dragon. <clears throat> exactly. But Einz doesn't know that. Einz knew he just tested you. Oh my god, this is what Aura thought. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's so funny, man. Always these misunderstandings. I love him so much. It's always interesting to see how far the misunderstandings go, right? And you think like, how will they misunderstand this situation, right? <laughs> because you're weak. Oh, he wants to talk. Okay. Yeah, and someone informed me that these are not really like wolf, werewolf like, they are more like mole like, which I think is interesting. Because these look more like werewolf 
thingies to me instead of like moles. <clears throat> okay, but they deal with the dragons. Strict rules. You have two options. Uh, the reason is either you do it or you die. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, let me have a quick talk, please. What do they choose? Okay, they choose to fight. Yeah, good luck with that. Death incoming. Oh! Oh my god! Holy... <laughs> She's like a shredder. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, where? Oh my god! She keeps count? <laughs> Dude, this is crazy! My chosen heroes? Are these the stronger ones? <laughs> no, no, not at all. This is just not even warm up. Yeah, these have like the blue and red fur. <clears throat> oh my god, this is crazy. I didn't expect it, an episode to be so bloody and vicious. So he's a clan lord? I mean, okay, Eins was somewhat right. Don't show your full strength at the beginning, right? So it was actually good advice. And now he has dragons under his controls. <laughs> Man, there are more dragons than I thought I, there would be. Dragon corpses. Oh, here we go. Oh, here he goes with his favorite spell again. And dead. Another dragon corpse, hey! <laughs> oh, man, I love this so much. I guess this will be his personal dragon. With the glasses. Oh, more like Aura's dragon. Yeah, I mean, he showed mercy, right? Join me and no one will die. Fight and you will die. And his aura again of despair. Indeed. I mean, I guess this turned out pretty well, because otherwise he would have, like, what, over 60,000 Kokora? So, having only 10,000 is, like, way cheaper to hold, right? <laughs> A bit stronger. <laughs> Oh, he realizes it. <laughs> yeah.
deliberately. <laughs> He's like, Nani? <laughs> Oh my god. Man, Shatir can be so cute. Looks like you found me out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of nice to see this side of Shatir. Oh, she's crying. This is so different from the Shaltia we know from the first three seasons. So it's interesting to see that side of her, I would say. Man, some nice food. <clears throat> Man, this episode was crazy. Because now we have dragons on our side, we have the Kuko on our side, and we got runesmiths. Oh, duck. Oh, goose. And it's not just a, sh a show, right? <clears throat> oh, Demiurge! First time seeing him. Oh, no, the second time, right. He got all the way here. Yeah, I mean, obviously. Yeah, this was not the big deal. None. <laughs> he just goes with the, with the flow. Millennium Kingdom. <laughs> I'm 10,000 years ahead. <laughs> Misunderstanding. Oh my god, I love it! <laughs> oh my god! Okay, what an episode. Let me know what you thought about this episode. But I think it was very interesting and crazy. Um, first of all, the when I said it's at the dragon part, how many dragons are there? I could have known the detail if I would have paid attention earlier because I rewatched the episode and the one dragon that I talked to said there are four bigger dragons and 15 smaller ones. So I could have known that if I had paid more attention, I would say. Um... And it's interesting for me to see that Ainz wants to see how strong a dragon is by casting Grass Part, because I think that's an instant kill move, right? So maybe if a dragon is strong enough, he can't survive it. Maybe in Yggdrasil, but I think in this world, there is probably no dragon that can survive that ability, I would guess. <laughs> um, and I mean, it's Ainz's favorite ability, right? He said that in Season 1, Episode 2 or 3, I think 2, when he first made his move. And... I think I'm a bit disappointed when it comes to the dragons. I thought we would see some cool action with the dragons, but it just turned out that it's basically casting grass part two times, killing two dragons, and that's it, without the dragons doing anything really, which I think was a bit disappointing. But I mean, it's, again, Eins is completely overpowered, and everyone that is on Eins' side is completely overpowered. That is part of Nazareth, and it just shows how strong he is that even dragons are no stand no chance against him, and I think otherwise, dragon are probably a bitty, a bitty, a pretty big threat in this world, I guess, that even normal heroes and probably adamantite warrior, uh, adventurer, are probably 
having a tough time against dragons so i guess it just shows how strong dragon is and that even dragons stand no chance against him and now we have dragons on our side which i think is a pretty big thing right um if you have a kingdom with dragons under your control easy peasy um and then i think it's also interesting not interesting but like the kukua part where they basically the lord basically chose who survives and who dies when he sent off like his heroes and shortly after he he said something along the lines of like he chooses who lives and die um because they try to rise again under Ein's um control basically um which i wonder what he means if he means like they submit and keep quiet for a while then they grow stronger and then they want to backstab him maybe if that's the plan then yeah good luck with that but i think what it will maybe that's the plan but i think what it will turn out to be will be that at some point they are in the kingdom and they start to like it and they just want to be controlled basically they want to be ruled over basically what Ein's plans to do so i think that will be what happens so they will maybe be maybe want to just use Ein's now but eventually they just want to live there and be there <clears throat> and the whole scene with Chaltia fighting the Kukoa was crazy. That was like the most vicious scene in the whole anime so far, I would say. I mean, we saw some fights and some blood and maybe some cut-off parts here and there, maybe. Um, but nothing to this extent that Chaltia is standing off a pile of dead and there are body parts flying around and cut-off torsos flying through the air and all that stuff. It was crazy, I would say. Holy shit. <laughs> that surprised me how brutal this episode was and vicious. Um, but it also was nice to see uh, Shaltia's side now, overall in this season, because before we saw Shaltia be more like in love with Ainz and all that stuff and be more like on the aroused side when she's near Ainz. And otherwise we saw like the more depressive side of her after she made the mistake and got res uh, resurrected. And now we have more the anxiety side of her or like the more uh sensitive side of her where she is like where she makes where she wants to make up for her past mistakes and is really afraid of making mistakes and all that stuff and is like starting to cry because of uh her misunderstandings with Ein's advice and all that stuff and that she thinks that he's like giving her such good advice and all that stuff it's very interesting to see the side of Shalti I would say very refreshing um and yeah something at the very end with demiurge i would say i want to know what he put in his report right he said he had made a report about the theocracy so i want to know what he found out about the theocracy because that's like one of the biggest mysteries so far in this in this world right the theocracy what they are doing how they are doing it how much power they have and all this stuff what their goal is and then the last thing i was confused about is basically when demiurge mentioned the undead laborers making it making um increasing the dependence dependence on eins which undead workers or laborers was he talking about the only th ones that i really saw was basically when fluda was introduced um because when fluda wanted to take control of an un of a death knight we saw when he left the cellar or whatever um or basement whatever cave we saw some undead basic skeletons um working on fields is he meaning something like that because I, i've never seen undead laborers like that on Ein's side. the only ones that i've seen i would say are probably the death knights patrolling the kingdom the city but i wouldn't really call them undead laborers for me the undeads are basic skeletons basically um i would call those more like maybe death knight laborers i don't know if he means those or something else that's something i'm confused about a bit but yeah otherwise awesome episode in terms of like kingdom progress we made big strives um we have now dragons on our side we have the coco on our side we have the runesmiths so yeah that's pretty crazy how much the kingdom has i would say is how much the kingdom has grown from this adventure into the dwarven kingdom basically we got so much out of it um so yeah, interesting to see what comes next. Maybe the information about the slain theocracy or maybe something completely different. 
I hope we go back to the kingdom and do some stuff there because we also have like from the intro this scene with the white haired girl that fights a death knight in like a city environment so I guess that's in the kingdom so I want to see that part because I'm really interested who that is who that character is why they are there what they are doing there and we still have from the intro the one mecha guy with the gun so I guess that could also be interesting who that is um so there's still more interesting stuff in this season which I'm very interested for and looking forward to but yeah let me know what you think about this episode and if you like what you saw leave a like subscribe or comment and thanks for watching until next time bye bye